They've got everyday names, spice, bath salts, but they're not used as everyday products. In fact, they can be lethal. They are the latest designer drugs your kids may be using, even bragging about on YouTube. What's even more terrifying, they are completely legal. Here's Brian Ross. Dickie Sanders was a hip, athletic young man who spent hours perfecting his technique as a BMX biker, placing second in this big competition in his home state of Louisiana. I like it a lot better in Texas. And trying to stay out of trouble for smoking marijuana. His dreams were actually to move to California as soon as he got out of drug court. So his father and stepmother, Rick and Julie Sanders, both doctors, were at a loss when Dickie told them he had just spent $40 on bath salts. Bath salts. What are you talking about? I'm like, spell it. He's like, bath salts, B-A-T-H-S-A-L-T-S. I'm like, bath salts? Like salts you put in your bathtub? Not at all, as a growing number of parents are coming to learn. The bath salts they know about have nothing to do with what their children know as bath salts, which are useless in the tub. What's being called a bath salt wasn't a true bath salt. What it really is, is a kind of code for a powerful hallucinogenic drug, a so far legal chemical that mimics the effects of cocaine or methamphetamine, sold under a variety of fanciful names that can be found at suburban malls and convenience stores across the country. Inside, a powder that is mostly snorted, creating a euphoria or rush that comes with dangerous side effects. They're so, selling time bombs. As the director of the Louisiana Poison Control Center, Dr. Mark Ryan has seen the all too often tragic effects of the so-called bath salts. We've had some people show up who are complaining of chest pain so severe that they think they're having a heart attack. They think they're dying. A lot of them, though, have extreme anxiety. They have extreme paranoia. Uh, they're having hallucinations. Uh, they see things, they hear things. Monsters, demons, aliens. Dickie Sanders snorted a powder from a packet called Cloud Nine bath salt. His father told 2020 how it sent Dickie into waves of hallucinations right in the kitchen. He saw non-existent police cars and helicopters. He was just counting them. He was counting the 20. He said, no, there's 21, 22, 23, 4, 25. There's, there's at least 30 police cars out there, Dad. And suddenly, suicidal thoughts. And he grabbed a butcher knife off of the counter he was standing in front of and impulsively just slashed his neck from ear to ear. The cut was not that deep, and after doctors sewed Dickie up, he told his parents about the Cloud Nine bath salts he had bought, sold legally at a store near the New Orleans drug court. He actually looked at me and said, I can't handle what this drug has done to me. I I'm never going to touch anything again. The so-called bath salts first showed up on the European club scene five or six years ago, before coming to the United States. They are one of a number of chemical concoctions now sweeping this country, in clubs and elsewhere. These are the bath salt powders, and there are others in which the chemicals are sprayed on incense or dried leaves to be smoked. Sold under the innocuous names of potpourri, spice, K2, or incense, they are well known to high school students as legal marijuana, but the users say much more powerful than the real thing. It does hit kind of harsh. It's so popular that there are dozens of YouTube video posts devoted to K2, Spice, and its chemical cousins. Yeah, guys, haven't tried this yet. It's legal. These young teens said they were playing hooky to extol the easy availability of the new phenomenon. Get it at any gas station if it's legal in your state. This boy said he liked the sweet flavored versions, including blueberry and bubble gum. And as you can tell, I'm really high off of this. Like, unbelievably high. Drug treatment centers around the country are now being flooded with teens who have become addicted to spice and the other chemical products, including 17 year old Nathan Braid of Los Angeles. It got me high very fast, like almost immediately 15, 20 seconds. Like a lot of teens and members of the military, Nathan started using spice because it wouldn't show up on the standard drug tests his mother had made him take. My mom was all proud of me. I'm like, see, I told you, I haven't been doing anything. The medical director of the Visions Treatment Center in Malibu, Dr. David Lewis, says the chemicals being used in these new products are very dangerous, especially for teens. K2 and spice are tremendously psychoactive drugs. And if you take a developing brain, what you really have is a chemistry experiment. 
a chemistry experiment that ended badly in Indianola, Iowa, for the baritone player in the high school band, David Roska, whose family and friends say he tried some K2 at a party after his graduation and hours later killed himself with a rifle. He's my first real boyfriend. David's girlfriend, Carrie Jackson, and his family are convinced K2 was responsible. David did not do this intentionally. He was like in an altered state. Now David's family and friends are pushing for laws to ban the chemicals so widely available, even in a small town in Iowa. The boys who bought this stuff went to a local shopping mall and purchased it. In now, a shopping mall? In a shopping mall. They don't care who, who they hurt or, or what they do. We went back to the Iowa mall, to the store that sold the K2 David used. But store employees would not talk with us and called security to throw our camera crew out of the mall. Lobbyists for retail stores say the product is legal and nowhere near as dangerous as some foods that trigger allergies. It's not a dangerous product, much less dangerous than, say, peanuts. It's less dangerous than peanuts. That's right. Dan Francis runs a trade group that represents stores which sell K2 and spice. You're opposed to any ban. A ban is very dangerous. Why is a ban dangerous? Because it sends it underground. And I'd like to ask the government, what is wrong with euphoria and who gave them the right to regulate it? And what regulations there are, are easily avoided by labeling the products not for human consumption, thereby making them exempt from regulation by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. We're compliant with the rules of the FDA. So that's a dodge? No, not at all. It's a fact. Mr. Francis, you can't sit here with a straight face and say, not for human consumption is anything but a dodge. Yes, I can. Francis says his stores have strict standards and that most retailers won't sell to anyone under the age of 18. Not true at this store in New York City, where the 14-year-old daughter of an ABC News employee, Sarah, wearing a hidden camera, easily bought spice. How much is the spice? $85. Never once asked for an ID. It was the same story across the country in Los Angeles where 16-year-old Dakota went undercover for us. The sign outside said, must be 18 years old with valid ID. But no one asked for Dakota's ID, and he bought a packet of spice with no problem. He just said, like, his friends tried it, and they, like, got really messed up on it. And he sold it to you? Yeah. I'm Brian Ross from ABC News. A question, you just sold this to a 16-year-old boy with no ID. You didn't check for the ID, didn't ask for the ID? The store clerk admitted he should not have sold the spice. What are the consequences of that kind of thing? What are you doing to those kids? Um, I mean, nothing good. I thought nothing good at all. A complete, you know, Russian roulette. Some of the stuff that these drugs may be causing are long-term or maybe permanent. For Dickie Sanders, the waves of psychosis continued after he first took the bath salts. He's not breathing, no heart rate, nothing. 24 hours after he tried to slit his throat, he had another psychotic episode, and his parents found him here in his bedroom, face down, bleeding, a rifle at his feet. His eyes were fixed and dilated. I reached down and felt some pulses again. Hands are just totally bloodied. And I said, baby, he's dead. We lost him. He's gone. He was a good-hearted person um, that loved life. He took his life because he is just scared out of his mind. The drug destroyed him. Dickie Sanders' death led the state of Louisiana to impose an emergency ban on the chemicals most commonly used in the so-called bath salts. But there is still no federal ban, and the drugs are legal and being sold in at least 30 other states and touted every day on the Internet as the new cool, legal high.